Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. It's been a long day. It's been a long week. Tomorrow's Friday. One more day. Then you got the weekend. Hope you guys have something fun planned for the weekend. Go do something exciting. Have an adventure. Maybe you just want to lounge around and just rest. That may be what I do. Let's talk a little bit about the liberal philosophy. I think this is important to go over for some people because some people don't really know what liberals are about. I'm not an expert really in anything in life, but I used to be a pretty hardcore liberal for a long time. I'm not heavy duty on politics and this channel isn't a political channel and I don't get on here to try to preach to people my beliefs or to persuade anyone to vote in any particular direction. But I've transformed, I've changed. I've gone from being very liberal, extremely left-wing lib liberal, very progressive, to being more moderately conservative. Now the odd thing is, is I feel like that I've kind of stood in the same place. Because I've had to ponder this myself. How, how could I go against everything I believe? Because that's kind of what it sounds like. I feel similar to Elon Musk in this respect. Not that I'm a billionaire, but Elon Musk talked about it this way in one of his interviews that he's always had certain values and those values haven't changed. His politics haven't really changed. What's changed is the left, the Democrats, liberals, the progressives. That's all changed. The definitions of words have changed. I can't even talk to those people and they used to be my people. I can't even talk to them anymore because we literally talk two different languages. They're not using the same definition of words that I'm using. We can't even agree on history, on facts, on anything. It's, it's two different realities. And that is what caused me to walk away. And it was hard because it was an identity. It was part of me for decades. I was a loud voice. I'm very outspoken. I was a loud voice amongst progressives and liberals. I'm sure I've convinced many people over the last 30 years or longer to be liberal. When I see these protesters, I feel responsible because it was probably someone like me who convinced their parents. How did they get brainwashed? Probably from someone like me. <laughs> but liberalism has changed. The beliefs are changed, have changed. There's a whole list of liberal beliefs that I cannot get down with. Things that they believe, that they get down with, that I'm not down with. I'm not, I'm not with you guys. I'm not with you. So let's go over some of these. And I just jotted down a list off of my own little brainstorm of things that I used to believe when I was a big time liberal things that I used to promote. And now these are things that I've done massive research on. I've pulled all my hair out. I used to have hair. <laughs> you remember when I started the channel? I had hair. I pulled it all out. I'm trying to figure this stuff out. So let's just go through some of it. This is in no particular order of importance, but let's start with hedonism. That's big. Hedonism is absolutely a core value of liberals. And there's many different forms of hedonistic thought, of hedonistic pleasure. It's not just simply trying to live like P. Diddy. <laughs> That's wealthy hedonism. But even the hippies, I'm sure they're dirty. 
they lived, they wanted to live in the woods and communes and things like that. I was raised by hippies. I was born in a school bus. This is not a fake name. People ask me about my name. I didn't make that up. Someone was teasing me about my name. I would have much rather as a kid had a name like John or Bob. <laughs> no, I had crazy hippie parents who were lost in hedonism. They didn't want to work. They didn't want to do anything that wasn't fun. They wanted to party all the time. Play bongos and sit in fields and smoke weed and do that kind of shit all the time. The hedonistic philosophy that becomes a lifestyle, it becomes an entire world, it, like a religion. Hedonism can be its own religion. There's like a culture to it. It leads down many different roads and it justifies a lot of the woke ideology and the identity politics and a lot of what you're seeing is going on right now comes from a place of hedonism, from pleasure seeking, from having that as your core value. Another one which is a core value of liberals and liberal ide ideology is tribalism. They're not interested in civilization. Their fantasy is to break everybody up into little tiny groups. This is part of what the group theory is about, and this also leads into the identity politics. They've changed the definition of multiculturalism. And this all leads down this path of tribalism. You gotta find your tribe. Find the, the tribe that you vibe with. I was talking with a liberal in my family just the other day, and he mentioned like 16 different groups that he thought I belonged to, just by kind of judging my personality. Well, you're white, you have blue eyes, you live in the South, you're this, that. He starts naming off these things that he thinks he knows about me, and these are all different groups in his mind. This is liberal ideology, and this is tribal thought. Let's put you into a little troop. Let's put you into a gang. Let's put you into a, a, some sort of segregated little group. And it's always the identification of it has to do with exclusivity that turns you automatically into this us against them mentality, You're always fighting some other, some other group always trying to identify your boundaries and your borders. You're not one of us. Kicking people out of your group because they're not pure enough. They're not like you enough. Looking at your group as being oppressed because you, maybe you're so small. The smaller the group, the more oppressed you are because you're not represented in pop culture or in society enough. These are all aspects of tribalism. We can talk about each one of these things for three hours. The next one on the list is communism. And of course, under that is also socialism. They're tied together, but let's just stick with communism. I can't tell you how many times that my, I myself and other liberals have sat around countless times trying to justify Karl Marx. Talking about how Sure, maybe Russia didn't do it right or China didn't do it right, but like as intellectuals trying to philosophize on some sort of way that maybe it could work, even though it never has worked. There's never been a communist country that's ever worked. There's never been a communist system that's ever worked. Even unions can be absolutely destructive. I've lived on communes when I was a kid come from hippies. We lived on communes. In our school bus, we'd pull up and we'd stay at a commune for six months or a year. And as, as, a, as a little boy, because I was really young, parts of it weren't that bad because I just played with other kids. But looking back on it, I'm glad we didn't stay long. I'm glad that whole point of my life, that the early 70s ended and the hippie shit died out, 
because it's, it's virtual child abuse. And, and the, the, the commune, they always fail. These little hippie communes, all of them fail. Another belief that liberals have is that the self is an illusion. And again, each one of these is a huge topic. We could talk about this for three hours. And I've studied this right here for a long time. Why would anyone believe that the self is an illusion? Is the self an illusion? And I used to buy into that idea. And where I found that it led me was, once again, the identity politics, where the point of it, why, why does someone believe the self is an illusion? is because they want to be able to continually recreate themselves. To identify as something else. Tomorrow, I'm a cat. I'm a woman. I'm a man. Because there is no real self. You invent yourself. It's all just something that you invent, and you can invent it every day. The self is an illusion. And I'm just trying to boil this down to some real basic black and white ideas. We could spend a lot of time picking this apart. Another thing they believe is there's no free will. Why would they believe that? That I've struggled with. And I've studied this idea of is there a free will? Is everything predetermined? Is everything fate? You have no decisions. If there's, if there's no free will, you're not making any decisions. You have no real freedom. You're not making any choices. There's no choice. I talk about this a lot. Life is about choice. You have the power of choice. You can make a choice. You can get up and do something. You can do something different than you're doing now. Oh no, oh, I'm wrong. There's no free will, uh, right? As I've become more and more religious with Abrahamic religion, studied Judeo-Christian philosophy, theology, I've embraced the idea of free will, and I like the story of Adam and Eve. I know what it means to be at that crossroads every day, to choose good and evil. You motherfuckers that are out there are lucky. <laughs> You're lucky that Sky chooses good every day. I choose it. I have free will. Another thing that liberals believe, I used to believe, and many of them believe now, is that there's no God. They're, they're vicious atheists. They want to, they're not just agnostics. They want to destroy any belief in God, and they're deeply offended if you believe in it. It's one thing if they just don't want to believe in it, but they don't want you to believe in it either. And this all leads to everything that we've been talking about previously to this, is that they want to be able to not be held responsible for their actions. That's why they don't believe in free will. And that's why they don't believe in God. They want to be able to do anything. This is where the, the ideology of letting uh, criminals go free, defunding prisons and police, not having any punishment. Everybody can just do whatever they want. You're not responsible for any of it. You raped that woman, you killed that person, Hamas beheads a bunch of people. Oh, nobody is responsible for any of their actions. Another belief that liberals have that I also used to have is that the past sucks, but it's not just that the past sucks. It's not just cherry picking and focusing on slavery and wars and oppression and suffering. And the past is full of those stories. Our own history is full of those stories. No, it's deciding that all of previous history was useless, as if there is no real evolution, there is no lesson to be learned from it or anything to be taken forward. There's no tradition. Tradition is pointless and useless. This is what the, uh, why you see these youngsters tearing down 
statues of Lincoln and Washington. And they want to burn down everything from the past. Remake everything. They remake all the movies. They have no creativity of their own. They just remake everything crappier, just like the buildings. Go look at the architecture. And the final thing, I could go on and on with this. The final thing that I put on my little list is that liberals believe that racism is the ultimate evil. That's the worst thing that exists. There's nothing worse than that. Racism is the ultimate evil. And this is a big topic. We could talk about racism for 30 videos. Each one of them could be three hours. But I was listening to a guy, Glenn Lowry, talk about this topic. And he's really smart, and I respect that guy. And he was saying that, you know, sure, racism exists. And yeah, it's terrible when you see it. It's ugly. You know, you're like, ah, oh, man. But in his mind, and I kind of agree with this because I've been around a lot. I've traveled a lot. I'm not a young guy no more. Racism really isn't that big of a deal, man. People are making it out to be a lot bigger of a deal. And they're buying into this shit and freaking out. And you get like Obama's kids who somehow think that they're oppressed because they're black. And it's like you live in a mansion. You guys have these opulent lifestyles of elitists. But oh, you're oppressed. What's the deal with this shit? Is it good intentions? I have to ask myself this, look in the mirror. Was I good in, had good intentions? I was just blinded, brainwashed, stupid, not doing research, just taking people's words for it. And I've wondered why was I a liberal for so long? Was I just a good intentions idiot? Or was I an active operative in an evil plot to destroy the world? Food for thought.